this country. You were saying earlier, Steve, about the contrast between him and Usain Bolt in terms of fame as we look at Bernard Lagarde. But if you look at Bekele's concentration on the star line, he's not quite a Usain Bolt, is he? <laughs> No, and I think he suffers by comparison with Gabriel Selassie only because of that. His exploits are uh, right up there. He hasn't, of course, turned to the marathon yet. Maybe one day, who knows? Well, that's his attempt, Brent. <laughs> Actually, it's getting better, Steve. It's getting better, it's getting better. It's, yeah. See, he agrees. It's getting better. Well, I think sometimes you just have to admire people's athletic ability. We can't all be Usain Bolt. A Mo Farah, picture of concentration there. This is a, an event which he's waited for since last year, as we look at Elliot Kipchoge talking about that race in 2003. 18 years of age, as Brendan was saying, on that great night in Paris on the last lap. Helga Rouge, I think we all thought he was going to be able to outkip Kipchoge, and that's the interesting dilemma, isn't it? The speed of the fast man versus the endurance of the distance man. Will the race be slow enough that Lagat starts to fancy his chances to use his 1500 meter speed? He couldn't defend his title at the shorter distance, but he did run well. He took a bronze medal in that final earlier in the week. He'll be really hoping that, as Brendan suggested, the first few laps might be slow, but I'm not sure how long the likes of Kipchoge and Bekele will hang around. Watch out, as I said, if we, we've got high hopes for Mo Farah. There are plenty of athletes in this race who will think they've got a chance of taking a medal. There's the three big names and then a host of others who, on their on day, your marks. could well challenge. The 5,000-metre final. That championship record, 12.52.79, set in that race in Paris. Not sure we'll see anything like that today, but who knows? Bakili has gone off hard around that first bend. Kipchoge following him. And then on the outside, Bernard Legat leading that group as well. And then once they've run that bend hard, they slow right down as we come through for the first time. 12 laps to go. Well, we've seen him in many, many kinds of races on the country, on the track, indoors and out, five and 10,000 metres. And his traditional opening is to get to the front as soon as he possibly can. Normally, his scenario is to get to the front as soon as he can and stay there. But um, today, he doesn't need to be in front all the time. But I think one of the things that he's going to be carrying with him in this race today is that he needs to make it somewhere in the race. He needs to make it fast enough so that he puts pressure on the Lagak and Kipchoge because he knows he can out-sprint them, but I think he can out-sprint them better in a, in a true run distance race. If it's really slow, I think he'd have a, he could have some questions, but Mo Farah at the back of the pack, just sitting there next to Abdosh, who ran such a brave race when he fell over in the heats and came racing back and ran very, very hard all the way there, and eventually was reinstated. And I thought that was a great piece of refereeing by the, by the judges, and I thought it was great what they did. Bakili settling down, and he's slowing there at the front. Well, he's picked the pace up a little bit. I'm, I'm just a little concerned about Mo Farah. He's, he's having to speed up a bit now to uh, get with this a bit of injection of pace. You can see they're all stretched out. He's right at the very back. Race where Mo Farah can't afford to be in that position for much longer. And if you look at it, they're running 61 at the front. He's got to run 60 seconds just to get on terms with them. And Steve's keeping a close eye on Mo Farah who he's suggesting is going through a bad patch, but I don't know why Mo's giving them this start now. In the early laps, it's not a problem, but now when they're operating this this speed, just imagine it, you've got to run faster than they're doing. Kennedy Zabakili looks over his shoulder and tells Ibuya, come on, it's your turn, I've done my bit. Mo might be uh, just playing a, a canny card here, as we'd say, because uh, when the pace is moving up and down, if you can just stay even pace, then that's uh, good to do. And if he has been going through a bit of a sticky patch at all, he's uh, certainly got himself into a better position. When they slowed up, they got himself back involved in the race, back in the pack, and I think that's a good place to be. Now, is it going to stretch out again? We've had this fast, slow, fast, slow, fast, slow. That's not... A rhythm which most athletes would enjoy, a 64-second lap there. Kipchoge and Abuya just putting some pressure. Three Kenyans all gathered around Bekele. He's been in this position many, many times before. That won't phase him too much. It's a hard way to run a 5,000 metres. 
to run an alternative 61 and then 64 second laps. You've got to get used to the rhythm and you notice that it's going to change. Sometimes you're hurting and you think, my goodness, I'm going through a bad patch, but then you realise the pace is being lifted. And now the three Kenyans, they're working as a team. Elliot Kipchoge did his bit and they've got eight laps to go in the men's 5,000 metres. And this is the kind of distance where athletes can start thinking about making serious attempts. Chep Kopp does his in the early stages. The race was slow and he wasn't a problem at all. But now the champions are at the front. The world champion for 5,000 metres, the world former world champion for 5,000 metres, and the world champion for 10,000 metres, Kenanisa Bikili. Just glancing over his shoulder there, he got a bit of a click on the heels. He wasn't very happy with that. He glared at Laga. 62 seconds, he's going to have to keep picking it up. He's going to have to keep moving it faster. And he's going to have to run faster than 62 to get rid of this group. This is building to a really exciting climax and one in which it's impossible to predict. A big group still as we come down to approach two laps to go in this 5,000 metre final. Mo Farah still there for Great Britain. Bakili at the front looking as though this is becoming a little bit of hard work for him. Bear in mind, he's had a 10,000 metre final to contend with 5,000 metre heats. Lagat had three rounds in the 1,500 metres, nowhere near as damaging as running a 10,000, of course. And that looks like, is that a Booyah who's just stepped off? That's a Booyah, and uh, it doesn't look as though, uh, well, he started to run again, not quite sure why. He had a little look behind to see whether he was last realised he wasn't. So, Bikili at the front, Bren, then Kipchoge and Lagat, the big three right at the four. And Lag Lagat not running great in the 1500 metres, I wonder if it's going to be as good today, or better today, I mean. And on the outside there, Kipchoge, he's, as we look at a Booyah there, and Kipchoge, he hasn't had a race coming into this one. Now he's on the shoulder of Kenanisa Bikili. Mo Farah is in a good place, moving up onto the outside. He needs to take closer order, and if he gets a run on the last lap, Mo Farah's in a great position now. He's finally worked himself so that he's close. He's yards only behind the great Kenanisa Bikili. There goes Bikili. He's going to hold it and hold it, and he's going to try and sprint and hold this race right from the start, right from the front. There goes. Mo Farah on the outside, he's got chances now. He's really quick, Mo Farah, but the three of the front are talented and Bekili is coming under a little bit of pressure. Farah's in a good place there. Can he strike from there or is he going to tire from there? What a battle we have before us now. 200 metres to go, Kananisa Bekila kicks hard from the front, Lagat is still there on the inside, Kipchoge looks as though he hasn't got too much left, Kipsiro of Uganda and then Qualia, Lagat the big threat, Kipsiro coming on the outside, Mo Farah just starting to disappear, but here we are, the big battle for the title, the defending champion Lagat, 1500 metre speed against 10,000 metre strength, who's going to win this? Right to the line, Bekili's going to get it, strength outlasts the speed, Bekili is the double champion. What a race from the two of them. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. I thought just for a moment that Lagat had the pace, but it came down to strength and guts and determination and, of course, no mean ability. Kenanisa Bekele, the double gold medalist. Mo Farah, you think, seventh or eighth? Seventh place for Mo Farah. I'm not sure he was at his best today, Mo, and he maybe would have enjoyed if you'd said beforehand this is going to come down to a last lap sprint, but that's what it was, Bren, and everybody became involved. Lots of athletes had a chance with 250 metres to go, but they couldn't get past this man. You know what, Bren, it always reminds me of a 5,000 metre Olympic final, Lassie Vera in 1976, when they were queuing on his shoulder to get past, they were queuing on the shoulder of Kenanisa Bekele, and they couldn't get past him. And I'm still queuing. I was queuing then, Steve, I'm queuing now. But this was a great, great race. That was a fantastic performance by Lagat. And we're looking at the split times, and they are pretty incredible. The race was slow and slow, and then gradually just began to pick up. Well, we've had one or two poor finals in the distance events here, but not that one. That was an absolute screamer. Kenanisa Bekele takes two gold medals, adds to his collection, 13-17-09, 53.9 for the last 400 metres, 26.1 for the last 200, absolutely incredible, pushed all the way, 
by a resurgent Bernard Lagat of the USA taking the silver medal. James Qualia, former Kenyan, now running for Qatar, took the bronze. And then Mo Farah in seventh place, place and Mo Farah is now with Phil.